test. Okay. Uh, welcome again. Charging is less. I have got it. Uh, good morning. But I'll give you charging. On behalf of the CNRO Hall of Science and Education Technology Unit, I welcome you all once again for today's event, the interactive lecture program in biology. Okay, the title of our talk is the science with fun. Okay, science is a fun. Okay, we are having 45 minutes lecture approximately followed by question and answer session. And I urge you to actively participate in the question and answer session. And we are having online participants also here. And they also, uh, I request all of you mute your uh, audios and not video. Video, we have to see you. Okay, then uh, you can ask your questions directly at the end of your presentation. And uh, online participants, you can write your name, uh, write your questions along with your name and school school name. Okay, and uh, thank you all all for your cooperation. Don't make any noise. Okay, in between. Okay, now I request Professor Shiba Vasu to introduce our speaker to you. And I'm sure you will enjoy each and every moment of this talk. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, madam. And uh, Professor Shiba, ma'am, uh, here she is a professor and scientist in uh, neuroscience. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's a very enthusiastic. Uh, big... No? Okay. Hello, everyone. So nice to see such bright and shining faces in the morning. And I, it looks like you are already uh, preempting what a wonderful time you're going to have. It is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Nishikant Subedar to you all. Uh, Professor Subedar is from Pune. Actually, he's from Nagpur, where he did his PhD. And he has spent several years in the Department of Pharmacology. He, in fact, retired from the University of Nagpur as the HOD, head of the department. And for many, many years, he has been studying the nervous system, all of you have heard of, and also the endocrine system and sort of a neuroendocrinology is neuroendocrinologist is what I would describe him as. But I think a very apt description of him is him being the most inspirational teacher that I have ever met. Now it's like, you know, saying everything, uh, pumping up the, uh, you, before the actual movie begins. But I'm sure that these words are not going to be, uh, you know, uh, underwhelmed. Uh, he is currently an emeritus professor at the uh, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research in Pune. And why is he here in JNCASR? Because he has been coming every year to teach a course in neuroanatomy. Anatomy? Neuroanatomy, okay? And again, the reason he's here every year is so popular that students want him to come back every year. You know the other really cool thing? How many of you have seen a cobra? Not on the computer, huh? real one. Okay, how many of you have seen a python? Okay, how many of you have seen the brain of either the python or the cobra? <laughs> yeah, so Professor Subedar has actually seen that. Not only just seen it, he has dissected it and looked at its parts and even described it. How cool is that? <laughs> With this introduction, I will let Professor Subedar uh, give his lecture on science is fun. Sir, please come. You see, when you all clap, even I feel like clapping, but then I know it's not a good idea to clap for myself, you know, so I'll be sorry. <clears throat> so it's a great honor to be invited for this uh, Professor Bharat Ratna, Professor Siena Rao, and uh, I feel I'm highly privileged <clears throat> to address this wonderful, uh, wonderful gathering of these young people, and uh, I'm really overwhelmed, and uh, the words that introduced me, that really put me off a little, you know, I mean, you know, you know what, uh, anyway. Uh, before I, uh, before I, uh, before I put my ideas before you, I have many specializations, okay, that she said work on this, work on that, but she didn't tell you one of my very special, great specialization is that I'm very good at making flop shoes. 
Okay, so so if uh, uh, if they today if I expose you to one of my those that specialization, uh, don't be surprised. Okay, yeah. okay. So so what we are going to do today is uh, say so supposing one morning you realize that you are not you. Very funny. What do you mean? You are not you. Well, you are you are you. Okay, but your brain is controlled by somebody else. Very scary thought, okay? Because, because ninety percent of my time I spend thinking about me, and why is the way I am, and how am I different from others, and how I'm special, okay? That's the way we all spend our time. We are humans, okay? And we like doing that. We enjoy it. For others, others don't matter. Okay? So we all we are all focused. Okay, okay, good, good. So uh, I'm going to take some interesting examples from science and discuss the phenomena as to what would happen if your brain were to be hijacked, hijacked, or some sort of bug which is placed in your brain, and then you suddenly realize that someone else is controlling you. And to demonstrate that point, I'm going to take two very well-studied examples from animal science, and I'll try to make my point. OK, now I'm sure you have absolutely understood what this animal is. Can somebody please guess and tell me what it is? Honey bee, very good. It's a honey bee, one of the few uh, few useful insects. Okay, in this world. Okay, now this uh, honey bee, you know, it uh, it's good. It gives honey, and we like it, and it's good. But uh, there's a sting in the tail. Okay, there's a sting in the tail, and uh, so we are always want to keep away from the hive. Okay, for the simple reason that uh, they don't upset them. Okay, they don't like it. Okay, and they work in a group, and when you are in a group, you could be really dangerous. Okay, and yeah, 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 and and uh, and the sting in the tail is worse than the sting in the bite of the mouth. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so you have this animal which is uh, which has a sting in the tail. But I'm not going to talk about uh, this particular animal. But I'm going to talk a very close relative of this animal. You know, we have animal groups, and then in classification, I'm sure you have heard of taxonomy where we classify. And I'm going to talk of another animal which is very close to this animal, and this animal is okay. Uh, this animal is a is another insect which is called as a wasp. It is very close, you know. It's very close animal. It's close to honeybee. And as you are, you can see the sting in the tail. And not only you can see the sting in the tail, but you can also see the drop of some very some very vicious, okay, some some very dangerous looking fluid that is oozing out. And obviously, you can guess that is the poison which the animal will inject into you if you mess up with the wasp, okay. Now with this wasp, and, and now I'll try to take you, since I have introduced you to the tail of the wasp and the poison that can, that can eject from the tip, I'll take you to this wasp, which is really our heroine of the day. Look how beautiful she is. Oh, look at the color. It's a very tiny insect, but you can just keep on appreciating the beautiful colors. Okay? And then it has a very interesting name. Emerald jewel wasp. Look at the name, emerald jewel wasp. Okay. For a moment, let us forget about the tail and let us enjoy the name and beauty of this animal. What is the name of the animal? Emerald jewel. Very good. Very good. And it, it, it she lives by itself and um, she has to reproduce and she has to lay her eggs and she has to make sure that her generation um, does well. It grows and again it reproduces and its genes. Keep on, uh, keep, keep on getting reproduced from time to time. How do you do that? Okay. How do you do that? Now, many different animals have different strategies, but this animal has a very funny strategy. I'll tell you why. <clears throat> I'm sure all of you have heard the word parasite. Great, great. Okay, this is a parasite. So it has to lay its eggs. Okay, which will serve as a parasite. But if you want to be a parasite, you need a host. And what's the host? The host in this case is going to be a much larger animal. And the larger animal is nothing but, I'm sure you'll immediately identify, it's a cockroach. It's a cockroach. Okay? Now, of the two, who is smaller and who is bigger? The cockroach is much bigger. Okay, the cockroach is much bigger. The, the, the jewel was very tiny. Okay? And now we are, going to we are going to talk about the very interesting relationship between which really exists in nature displayed by these two participants. The jewel wasp on one side, and the cockroach on the other. And what is the aim of the jewel wasp? The female particularly, her aim is to lay the egg. Listen to this. Lay the egg 
on the body of the cockroach. Okay, look, you mean to say that the uh, cockroach is going to say, okay, no problem, you can come to me, you can use my body and you can land, I'll give you all the cooperation. Is cockroach going to say that? Ah, no, I see, they, 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 no, no, it's, 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 you can't, you can't just do that. But then how do you make, how does the jewel vase comply? Okay, how does it manipulate the cockroach so that the cockroach can cooperate with and receive and, and eventually nurture the tiny egg? So what is the aim of the wasp? To lay a single egg. How many egg? Not many, just single egg. Where? Somewhere on the body of the cockroach. Now, how do you do that? Well, for that, the jewel wasp has come up with an amazing strategy. Number one, first thing, you must identify your victim. And what is the victim in this particular case? The victim. So you identify a nice, bulky looking cockroach, which we hate so much, but Jewel Vas finds it extremely attractive. And then it goes and then approaches the cockroach. Okay. And then relative to Jewel Vas is more agile. You know what is an agile? It's more alert, it's more dynamic. And then it gives, listen to this, two injections. Who gives two injections to whom? Very good. And, and where is the injection located? In the tail. The sting is the injection. We have already seen the, we have already this, this seen the sting and we have already seen the, okay. How many of have you had the, the, um, not pleasure, the pain, the pain of having been injected by an anesthetic agent in your gums before you are operated for maybe a, a maybe a cavity or maybe a root canal or how many? I want to. I want to see your hands. Oh, great! Okay. So you know, you know that in that cases, in those cases, you have been injected. Now, can I ask you why did the dentist give you that injection to anesthetize to 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 put your pain receptors to sleep? If your pain receptors are active, you will attack the dentist. You wouldn't. You wouldn't let him touch you. No, no, not even with a ten-foot-long pole. Okay, you will, you will, you are, you are not, you will not be such a nice and uh, a nice and a nice and very friendly patient. So he makes sure to make sure that you you cooperate with him. He gives you a tiny injection, and then that that uh, anesthetizes your your pain receptors, and then you don't feel the pain, so that he can work on it. Uh, this guy, Jewel Vasp, has something similar, and you have already seen the instrument or the apparatus with which or does the sting with which it can give so this wasp of yours is going to give not one but two stings to the subject now what is the subject can you please tell me cockroach very good very good now if you see this image the cockroach has now let's let me test your knowledge how many legs does the animal have six 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 this uh, this animals insects have six legs Okay, four pairs of wings and therefore we also call them as hexapoda. So tomorrow if somebody uses the word hexapoda, you already know. What is it? Na, any insect. Any insect. In particular, an example, cockroach. Okay, hexapoda. Okay, so the, now here is the, here is the, here is the technique. Here is the technique. What it does is, but before that I'll ask you a question. Do you think cockroach has a brain? How many of you think that it doesn't have a brain? Or how many of you think that it has a brain? Very good. It has a, of course, what do you mean? Now, not only you and me are not the only people to have a brain. Okay. Sometimes we pretend, you know, but we don't have it. So, so um, the cockroach has a very elegant brain. It has a huge brain and with the help of, you know, suddenly it's, it's night time and then suddenly you put on the light and suddenly in the corner you see a scaring cockroach. Have we gone through that experience sometime? Uh, and then it, it sees the, so what is the problem with the animal? You see, it likes me. It's a nocturnal animal. What is a nocturnal animal? It's night active. It's night active and it doesn't like light. Okay, so in the, in the middle of the night, it's, it's, it's roaming around. This is all my reign. This is all my kingdom. It's roaming around. And suddenly you human beings go and disturb the animal by switching on the light. It gently scurries and goes to the darkness, you know. Why? Because it can see the light by his eyes. The information goes to the brain. Then the, it, 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 suddenly in the brain, oh, I don't like it. So then it gives the instructions. The brain gives the instructions to the legs. And animal walks, crawls, crawls and hides itself below some almira or some furniture and it protects itself. So it has a brain. 
it has a brain that brain can control the legs and with the legs it can move around with the legs it moves around the first injection is going to be given in the nerve center which controls the legs get the message what is the message and the tiny jewel wasp is going to give two injections one injection is directed to that part of the nerve which will control the legs and if the if that part of the if that part of the brain which controls the legs is just like your injection in the gum if it is anesthetized what will be the response of the animal i can't move i can't go into tiny dose very tiny injection gives and the animal can't move is the animal dead no it's the animal is not dead it just it just the animal is not able to move okay but you know the effect of that the effect of that injection that animal has given is very it's very brief it will go away i mean you have taken an injection in the gum does it remain forever no it remains for a while and then goes away so similarly this also will remain for a while and it will go away but there's a 15 minute 20 minutes time window during the time if you want to manipulate if the wasp wants to manipulate the brain of the cockroach you have 15 minutes of time the 15 minutes of magic and that magic is the second injection what is it the second injection the second injection is a perfect case of what a surgical strike is it gives right in the middle of the brain of the cockroach a very tiny injection in which of the of the brain which consists of thousands of brain cells you know cells brain cells only a half a dozen cells are hit by the poison not the entire brain no 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 not the entire brain. it doesn't want to kill no it just gives a shot a perfect shot so that half a dozen cells neurons in the brain of the cockroach are silenced and you know what are those cells those cells are very important those particular cells are very important for the will of the animal as long as those cells are there the animal will say okay i this is light i don't like it i will go to the darkness this is food i will go to the food this is uh, this is the cockroach of opposite sex i will be attracted for all the motivation of the animal remember you can link it to your direct motivation you will what is the motivation you are thirsty you go for a glass of water because you are thirsty what is driving you to the glass of water to drink it the motivation where does the motivation come from it comes from thirst if i don't let you go for another 2 hours something else is going to motivate you the motivation will be to go for to food why does the motivation come from hunger it comes from hunger similarly those six cells which have been deactivated into the brain of the cockroach by the second injection by the sting given by the jewel wasp the six cells which have been deactivated they have robbed robbed taken away the cockroach of its will to do what it likes what it should do what it should do it should try to run away can it run away no the legs are paralyzed is it dead no, it's not dead it's not dead why it's not dead because the jewel was doesn't want it to die i oh, no 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 i will take charge of your brain i'll take charge of your body but i'll not kill you why not because i want to lay my egg on your body then from the egg larva will come out you know the life cycle of insect egg larva the larva will come out and the larva will feed on the juices of your body i don't want to kill you because i kill you the juices will rot i don't want my tiny baby to eat rotten food i want it to fresh juicy blood of a live cockroach i don't want to kill you okay but i want to take charge of your body i want to take charge of it that's why i'm going to attack only that group of six cells which is a source of your motivation which is a source of your personality so now you will be my slave who says to him the wasp says to the cockroach you are my slave and when you know what cockroach says without saying so be it my lord so be it so then the wasp just as you take a dog on the leash and for a walk similarly the jewel wasp will catch the cockroach by that antenna you know what is that antenna okay it will catch it by the antenna 
pull the cockroach and the cockroach is most cooperative why is it cooperative because those cells which are motivating the animal to look off its own look look for itself and for its protection and its defense those six cells have been taken charge they have been killed so the animal is not itself its whole personality its soul its everything motivation has been taken away by the animal by the jewel wasp so the jewel, the jewel wasp will hold the cockroach by the antenna drag it to the tiny burrow which is the home of the jewel wasp welcome to my home welcome and takes it deep into the burrow okay and then once it takes into the burrow the cockroach walks it walks it cooperates because this is 15 minutes the effect of the injection on the nerves which 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 paralyzes the eggs that effect is gone or are the legs working fine they are working fine now but because of the shot in the brain its motivation is lost so all the way the, the wasp does is to take the cockroach as you take a dog by the leash by the antenna take it down into the burrow and then lay a tiny single egg on the abdomen of the cockroach then comes out of the burrow on the burrow it covers it it doesn't want another wasp to know about its secret hidden place covers it with tiny pieces of wood and the leaf the uh, leaf etc and then goes away and then inside then from the egg after 3 days a single larva comes out a single larva comes out the larva has enough mouth parts to dig into the body of the cockroach cockroach is live hello isn't dead still it's live only its motivation is gone it doesn't want to run it doesn't want to escape it just lies there and then the larva penetrates into the body and it is it is in the ocean of of what you can call ice cream and then it so it's it's, it's uh, honey and all the best things you can think of the best food and it's live the animal is still live and then first it it takes the blood mm very tasty very tasty and then and, and then it takes the muscles mm very tasty you know something it takes all the organs except those organs which are necessary to keep the cockroach life hello take what you want but don't kill the cockroach because because the larva is growing and the larva is going to take 2 3 weeks to grow during that time i want to keep the cockroach as alive as possible so i'm going to be with you i'm going to be in you i'm going to eat all your body parts but keep those parts intact which are necessary for your life i won't kill you no i will not kill you of course eventually you will die but by that time the larva has pupated and the pupa will now emerge and a new single jewel wasp the next generation will come out by then the body of the cockroach is only a shell it is empty from inside there is nothing in it and the cockroach is dead and the new jewel wasp had just come out so what is really jewel wasp done to the cockroach it has taken away the original its own mind of the cockroach okay do you appreciate the beautiful story now i'll take you to another story which is even more interesting so okay this is the story i'll take you back can you see what's happening here i do you remember i told you about two injections hello okay the first injection was given into that part of the nervous system which paralyzed the eggs of the animal here is the here is the wasp injecting the first shot which is directly into the in that part of the nervous system where the where the legs will be paralyzed here and then here it is and that and and this is the shot into the into that part of the brain where the where those sex will be uh, where those uh, six cells will be deactivated and now here you can see the jewel wasp is holding the uh, the the, co the cockroach by the antenna and drawing it and look at this and and the cockroach is so happy and lovingly it goes to the burrow and it says uh, the one cockroach which has not been it says don't go don't go it was a good thing when she said that she wanted him to come to the home for dinner okay and this cockroach which has no mind of its own we'll call it as the zombie cockroach what do you call it as zombie cockroach is taken to a burrow to hide it from the predator and and it is hiding there because it doesn't want the cockroach to be eaten by somewhere else and here is the here is the egg that is being uh, that is being laid on the body and this is this is the entire life cycle and this is how and can you see something very interesting here from the abdomen of the cockroach which is lying upside down on its back and from the abdomen is now broken it's only the shell there's nothing inside and can you something see something interesting at the other end 
What do you find there? Yeah, the, the next generation of the jewel wasp is emerging from the emerging from the body, and this is how the, the animal is able to. Okay, so I'll move on to I now take to I have two stories to tell you. I have just uh, uh, I thought you I, I I hope you find the first story interesting, uh, but I'll keep the second story now. I'll come to the second story now, which I think is even more interesting. So brace yourself for another journey into how the okay, this is something interesting. Don't you realize what do you find here? It's Tom and Jerry, right? Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look at the bangus. You said the guy is so frightened, you know. I mean, it is uh, that is saying, okay, you come out, I'll show you what is what. Okay, and uh, and uh, and the mouse says that no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine where I am, and uh, um, I'm safe where I am. And you know something, the uh, uh, if you are a uh, if I if I by magic I'll make you into a tiny mouse, okay, and uh, I'll put a cat there, and then I'll keep on seeing your reaction. You know something, you have two options. You have two options, and and you know rats and mice are very smart animals. We have seen them in the in the cartoons. We have seen how smart how smart they are. So, so you have two options in front of you. One option is, look, 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 the cat is still far away. and I can run. I can run. So I'll run. Okay. And save myself. But then suddenly you realize, oh, no, 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 no. The cat is really close to me. And if I try to run, I may be caught. You know what is the next choice? Freeze. Freeze. You know why freeze works? It works. Many cases it works because cats have a problem. The problem is they are readily attracted to a moving object, but they don't readily see a steady object. So the so the mouse hopes, hopes, we don't know, hopes that if I just keep quiet like this, frozen, okay, I may, I may, uh, I may not be detected by the cat. Okay, and sometimes it works. Well, life, sometimes it doesn't. And then you know what happens if it doesn't work? Okay, so, so, uh, so the basic question I'm going to ask you, and I'm also going, going to give you the answer. The animal gives a response. What response? Or two responses. One of the two responses, either you run or you freeze. Okay, and both responses, depending on the strategy, depend on how far the cat is, whether the cat is looking at you, or if not, then you feel. Well, well, well. Why are you giving those responses? You are giving those responses because there's an area in your brain, in your brain and in my brain, okay, that area tells us fear. What does it tell us? Fear. What does it tell us? Fear. You see, I, I, the, the, uh, even, if, uh, even if you are a child, okay, if you suddenly see a snake, you don't have to be told that this is a snake, it will bite you. No. Our instant reaction is that. This is a snake. It may bite me. I be I better be careful. Fear. So one of the many things that nature has given all the animals to survive. Number one, hunger. Number two, thirst. Okay. Number three, fear. Can you imagine what would happen to you if you get rid of all the fear? Okay. No. You need fear. Fear is very necessary to protect yourself from likely from likely dangers. So fear is very important ingredient for the survival of any animal. So in this particular case, uh, in this particular scenario that are, you are seeing, is it likely that when the cat is still there, the mouse will venture out and tell you, oh, okay, oh cat, I don't care about you. Can, you. can you do that? Why not? Because there's fear. Fear in the, fear in the, if we are in the heart of which animal? The mouse. Where does the fear come from? A particular part of the brain. I'll call it as a fear center. What will I call it as? Fear center. So do you have a fear center? Yeah, you have a fear center. Okay. So does the mouse have a fear center? It has a mouse. It has a fear center. So this is your, this is your human brain and somewhere there, but don't worry too much about it. That is a fear center. Okay. Now comes the story becomes more interesting and I will draw your attention to, okay. Uh, one basic question. Do you know why malaria happens? Hello. Why does malaria happen? Bite from a mosquito. Very good. Bite from a mosquito. Okay. And you get malaria because mosquito gives you something, you know. It gives you, what does it give you? Plasmodium. Hello. How many of you remember the word plasmodium? It is a malarial parasite. Oh, yeah, let us raise the hand. What, what, is the, what is the name of the malarial parasite? Plasmodium. Excellent. Plasmodium. 
Uh, is plasmodium, uh, this is a test for you, let me see how many of you pass. Is plasmodium a single celled animal? Yes or no? Uh, okay, only I am right, everybody is wrong. Okay. Plasmodium is a single celled animal. Okay, it's a very tiny, it's a very tiny single cell. It is. It belongs to phylum protozoa. Uh, don't bother about it. Okay, so there's another, forget about it. Just remember that it's a tiny animal that gives you malaria. There's another animal which is very similar to that, which is called as toxoplasma. Say that again. Very good. Toxoplasma. Say that again. It lives in the gut of the cat. Where does it live? And in the, in the elementary canal of the cat, okay, this tiny, tiny animal lives and it reproduces there. It reproduces there. And then when the cat poops, when the cat poops, along with the poop of the cat or the fecal matter of the cat, thousands of these tiny, 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 tiny toxoplasma animals, they also shed out and they, where they go, they mix in the dust. So, you know, if you go out, maybe it's possible that in the dust around you, without knowing it, there may be thousands of what? Toxo, toxoplasma organisms may be there. They are being released there by whom? By the cat. Now, if this Tiny organism, this is sting in the dust. Is it dead? No, it's there. It can stay there for six months as a particle of the dust. Can I see it? Yeah, if I take a tiny sample and put it in the microscope, put it in the microscope, I can see it. Okay. I, but it's there. Okay. And then it wants to live and it wants to reproduce. Can this toxoplasma live without a host? No. What is the host? The cat. But the cat is not going to eat the dust. Is cat going to eat the dust? No, then, then how is the how is the toxoplasma which is moving all around in your dust in the garden in, in, in the garden and everywhere? How is it going to get into the cat? It's very difficult to get into the cat, but there is one strategy. What is the strategy? Get into the rat or get into the mouse. Okay, and then once you get into the rat, there are very good chances that the cat will eat the rat. And if the cat eats the rat, then the toxoplasma, if it is there in the rat, can find its way into the cat. Very brilliant strategy. Okay. So then toxoplasma keeps on waiting, waiting, waiting and waiting and hope someday, well, if it's lucky, okay, along with the food somewhere, it is consumed by the rat. So the toxoplasma, which was there in the lying in the dust is very lucky, some of them and they get into what? Into the body of rat, got in the body of the rat. So what it does in the, so once it enters into the body of the rat, it goes everywhere, it goes into the stomach, it goes into the liver, it goes into the muscle, it goes into the brain, it goes everywhere. Who goes everywhere? Toxoplasma. Where everywhere in the body of the in the body of the, uh, the rat or the mouse or whatever it goes everywhere. It goes everywhere. And listen to this. It also goes into the brain and into the brain and into the fear center. Where does it go? Into the fear center. And then once it is in the fear center. It starts manipulating the brain of the rat. And as a result of that, that particular rat in whose fear center the toxoplasma is sitting suddenly starts falling in love with the cat. Are you with me? And then the thing it likes most falling in love is the smell of the urine of the cat. You can imagine how deadly that would be for a mouse to fall in love with a cat and that also the urine of it. Okay. And then here is a picture in front of you. And can you guess what is happening into the brain of this mouse, which is looking at the cat? Obviously, in the brain of the mouse, in the fear center, there is toxoplasma and that toxoplasma is manipulating the brain of the mouse. And the mouse which is normally supposed to be really fearful of the cat now is attracted mortally, deadly attraction. You can call it as what? A deadly attraction. And as a result of that, you can imagine, you can imagine, you can, you, can, you, can you imagine this cartoon? You can see you can see the mouse whose brain has been overtaken by the toxoplasma and the toxoplasma in the brain, it tells go and attack the cat. 
I don't care about it. Okay, and as and as and the cat is cat is really surprised as to what's happening to this animal. It is supposed to normally scurry and run away, but but it is but it is almost threatening me and it's attacking me. But the mouse doesn't care, and of course you can imagine what will be the result of this battle. What will be the result of this battle? Okay, so the cat will eat the mouse, and once the cat has eaten the mouse, then obviously the toxoplasma has got has. Entered, has found entry, has found access into the gut of the cat. Hello, are you with me? So by the so the now the 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 the, the mouth, the toxoplasma has found its way into its ultimate target. Was what's ultimate target that I have to e I have to reach the gut of the cat. Where then that is the that is the perfect. You see this this toxoplasma can can enter anybody. It can enter human body. It can goat, sheep, anything. But 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 to reproduce. Toxoplasma, if it wants to reproduce, it can reproduce only, only in the gut of the cat. So it must find a mouse which would be eaten by the cat. And once it is eaten, eaten by the cat, it can find its way into the into the stomach and intestine of the cat, and then it will start reproducing, and, and then eventually it will it will complete its complete its life cycle. So here is a here is a very classic example. In which one organism manipulates the motivation and the sense of defense, it overtakes completely overtakes the the brain of yet other animal and and completely manipulates its behavior so that the animal, the the rat or mouse-like animal whose uh, brain has been taken over, subjects itself to the interest of the toxoplasma and not to its own interest. I think uh, with these couple of stories, I'll. Uh, I'll, I'll conclude my talk, and uh, if there are any questions, uh, I would like to answer them. Yeah. Yeah, you want me to play the video? OK, OK. That video is actually very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have it here. You have internet here? Problem. Why is it not what we are trying to do is, uh, I got a I got a video on YouTube. You know, we talked about the earlier part of the story when we talked about uh, the jewel wasp and they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have got a link on uh, from YouTube in which is a three. It's a tiny three minute video in which you can see the behavior and the interaction between the jewel wasp and uh, and the cockroach. Okay, uh, we are just trying to show it to you. And just as we have a fear center in our brain, okay, and you know what would happen to, uh, as we have seen. So this is a classic example as to just imagine if your fear center. I mean, this is a this is a very nice story, and we enjoy the story. But you can also imagine a, a rather uncomfortable scenario in which your fear center were to be overtaken. Okay. Uh, you can you can think of just as we have a fear center in our brain, we have a we have a center for anxiety. Okay, so if I have an examination tomorrow, you can imagine what would be happening to your anxiety center. Okay, we are all we have all we have all gone through that experience. Okay, and don't think that you are only anxious. Even I was very anxious when I was told that I have to come in front of I have I have to come in front of extremely smart students and give a talk. I was as anxious as you were. Okay, I'm still very anxious. Okay. All right. So I can see it well. Pardon me? In porpoises. Uh, I, I, I'm not aware of the work on porpoises, but I'm sure, absolutely sure it would be there. Yeah, because uh, uh, homologous structures have been identified in all other animals. They have been identified in monkeys. There's a lot of work in there's a lot of monkeys. Uh, the, the experiments are that when the uh, fear centers called as amygdala was destroyed, the, uh, the, the monkeys which were normally supposed to be fearful, they are lost fears. But I'm absolutely sure it will be there in porpoises.
those ampy works comes the jeweled cockroach was she approaches it carefully as the roach is far bigger than she is. Once she is close enough, she strikes. Start from beginning. Interesting creature. This is Ampulex Compressor, the jeweled cockroach wasp. She is on the hunt for something. And this is it, a cockroach. She approaches it carefully as the roach is far bigger than she is. Once she is close enough, she strikes, stinging it twice. The first sting disables the roach's front legs. The second she delivers directly into the insect's brain. But this does not kill the roach, nor is it even paralyzed. The wasp's venom simply disables the roach's escape reflex. Were you to turn on the light, it would not scatter. While the venom begins to take effect, the roach grooms itself compulsively. The wasp waits nearby. Hmm. Having waited long enough, the wasp returns to her prey. Vibrating her wing muscles like this allows her to sever the roach's antenna. Scientists think that by tasting the roach's blood, she can gauge how effective her sting has been. Too little venom and the roach will recover before she is done with it. Too much and it may die too soon. Satisfied, the wasp leads the stupefied insect to her burrow. She probes the roach's body, looking for just the right place. Once she has found it, she lays on it a single egg. The roach is not sustenance for her, but rather for her young. Now she must protect her investment. She carefully seals the burrow with twigs and rocks. A process that may take 30 minutes or more. Inside the burrow, the roach remains, alive and well, 
but unable to escape. The egg will soon hatch. As a grub, the young insect will bore its way into the cockroach's body and consume its internal organs in the order most likely to keep it alive for as long as possible. One month later, a new wasp emerges. Ready to begin the process again. Yeah. I'm sure my introduction did not prepare you for this drama. Let's give a big round of applause to Professor Hugo. Questions? Sir, you told that uh, toxoplasma will not feed up on other. It does not go, get into other animals' gut to reproduce. Only it enters the cat. Why so that? Only it enters into the cat. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. Uh, the the environment, the you see, the environment. What are we talking about? Environment in the gut of the host. Now the environment that is available in the gut of the cat, depending on the food and other constituents and the secretions and the enzyme etc. That happens to be most conducive for the growth of toxoplasma. And that particular environment which is there in the gut of the cat, it does not find in the gut of any other animal. So that happens to be most suitable. It has, it has evolved that way. Therefore, it must find another cat to go there and reproduce. Okay, And it doesn't find. So the point is it doesn't find that environment anywhere else. Therefore, it may go somewhere else. Okay, So supposing that rat is eaten by somewhere else, it may go, but toxoplasma will not survive there. For the, for the toxoplasma to survive and then grow and then reproduce, it needs the environment which is there available only in the gut of the cat. So if it enters to other animals, it would die in the... It would die, absolutely. It can't survive. It can't survive. Thank you. Hmm? No, the, uh, this, is, this is sexual. Asexual, actually, asexual reproduction happens in the mouse and rat and anywhere, but for sexual reproduction, it has to go to the... Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, next. Sir, I would like to begin by saying that your lecture was very informative and engaging. And Thank you. Uh, I actually have a question about research, if you don't mind. So, growing research. About research, oh, sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. Good. Uh, growing up in Pune, I've had a, I've had a lot of privilege of visit, visiting DRDO labs and attending many lectures and seminars. Mm -hmm. But, and there are many research institutes in India as well. Mm -hmm. JNS Arc in Bangalore, mm -hmm. RASC Bangalore, Bark in Mumbai. Yes. But the quality of Indian research, as Sir himself said, mm -hmm. it's not uh, on par mm -hmm. with other countries. Mm -hmm. And what do you as a scientist and a professor emeritus suggest mm -hmm. we do as a society mm -hmm. to battle it? How do we increase our research? Very good question. Yeah, very good question. And this question is very close to the heart of you, 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 everybody. This question is very close to it. I will not give a very elaborate answer, but I'll give the answer which Professor C. N. R. Rao gave a few years ago. He said that we are spending about less than 1% of our GDP on science. He said that it has to be taken to four. So there are many constraints, but one of the really big constraints that is really hindering the process of Indian science. We have extremely talented people, talented people. When they go abroad, you know what wonders they do. Okay, but then uh, not having sufficient funds is a is a great uh, is is one of the major. As you just compare how much uh, um, what percent of GDP is spent in Japan or in Germany. Okay, as compared to that, we are. Uh, I mean, that, that's obviously one of the reasons. Of course, there are other reasons, but this happens to be one of the most important reasons. Have I given you a convincing answer? I don't yes, really sir. know, but I have attempted. Thank you. 
you want to ask. Good morning, Captain. sir. Yes, please. Sir, at first I have one small question. What's the color of the uh, blood color of the wasp? Oh, color of the blood of the wasp. Okay, uh, it's colorless. It's colorless. Why is, yeah, okay, let me put it this way. The okay, uh, like we know that uh, for, as per our knowledge, the color of the blood of the cockroach is white. Mm -hmm. What happens if the like colorless blood of a wasp feed on the cockroach? Like, uh, we know that the color of the uh, wasp blood color is colorless, no, sir? Yes, yes. But cockroach co blood color is white. No, it's not white, it's colorless. Even cockroach? Uh, slightly pinkish, slightly pinkish. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, you see, it is, it's, a, it's a colorless fluid. It has a color because of the different types of cells which are present in it that, that, that bestow certain color to that. But, uh, but the, as there is, see, simply because the, uh, simply because the wasp, the larva is feeding on the, uh, on the hemolymph, that's, it, that's the right word for the blood, hemolymph of cockroach, it is not going to have any influence on the, uh, on the colorless fluid or slightly whitish fluid that you find into the, into the uh, body cavity of, uh, of the larva of uh, wasp. Am I answering it correctly? Huh? Is it? Yes, yes. yes sir. Didn't understand, please ask okay. once again. You got it? Don't hesitate. Huh? Oh, no, no. Yeah. So, why does the wasp choose only the cockroach in spite of other organisms? Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, this is a this is a very interesting question. Actually, this is this the answer to your question is very much similar, or the question is very much similar to the question she asked as to why does the why why does it happen only in the cat and why not in some other animal? The answer to that question is the this is the the relationship between the wasp and the cockroach did not happen overnight. It's a process of evolution over millions, a lot millions of years. These two animals have lived together, and then then the animal has evolved the mechanism. You see, just just going and stinging somebody is fine, but then to sting to give the first sting precisely into that part of the nervous system so that the legs of the cockroach are paralyzed and then give the second stings in the brain of the cockroach so that its thinking power is taken over. Okay, this is, this is a very precise relationship between the two and that has not evolved overnight. So, so it can go to some other insect, but if it gives a sting, it may not go to the proper place. It may not work. So the animal has evolved over, over the millions of years and then it has decided that no, my, for, I have evolved, my sting is evolved. And so, so that I can give it precisely to the, so, so my, so, so my victim is a cockroach. So, so some other animal is there, the strategy just will not work. So, since that is not in, uh, effective or efficient, it chooses the cockroach. Since the cockroach has some effi uh, efficient stuffs, does it choose? Am I getting that too bad? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I think I, I'm, I'm sure your question is absolutely correct. One of the reasons is it must have evolved because it must be looking for a, it must be looking for a victim which has plenty of blood, plenty of resources. And amongst the insects, cockroaches happen to be rich. You know, look at the size. Okay, so therefore, I'm sure uh, uh, that must have contributed to the reason why uh, the wasp has uh, chosen um, the the uh, cockroach as its victim. Sir, and uh, does the blood of cockroach and wasp have the uh, formed elements of uh, blood? I'm not like, getting the but I'm not getting it. Does Please. the blood of cockroach or the wasp have the formed elements of blood? The elements. Formed elements. Uh, like RBC, WBC, and platelets. Oh, they, they, are, they, are, they are similar, but they are, if you go to the finer level, there are a lot of lots of differences. There are different you see, uh, all insects have different types of, but they are two different species. Okay, so they're different types. First of all, there are no RBCs. Okay, so you have 
Yeah, yeah. If you go into the details, there, there, there are lots of differences. Lots of differences. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, uh, online. Uh, Dilip. On it. One thing. I'll come to you. Can I, can I ask a question? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Please ask. Yeah, yeah now we can see also. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Mr. this is Vidyadi Raja. We met yesterday. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, this was an awesome talk. I really uh, loved it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. This, this detailed level of programming that you just mentioned. Yes. See this detailed level of programming in many insects. I mean, see the thing is when the wasp came out, there uh -huh. was no, there, there was there was nothing for it to train, but it is somehow genetically programmed to exactly know where yes. the cockroach's nerve center is, how yes. to paralyze it, how to do all yes. this. So it is genetically yes. programmed, you're saying, right? Yes, it's a genetic program. Now, the thing is, uh, when we see this genetic programming in uh, other animals also, for example, I mean, the way ants build ant hills or the way bees yes. build the uh, beehive and so on, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, are there such genetic programs in humans also? That's the first question. Yes. Second question is, uh, do we know, I mean, do we have a microscopic understanding of this genetic programs mm -hmm. in the genetic structure? Uh, the uh, the answer uh, the uh, answer to the first of your first part of your question is yes. Uh, we uh, the humans have uh, we have we have certainly have built-in structures. If you take a very simple example, that whether it is a monkey or a man, even without being trained or exposed to any snake, okay, mm -hmm. there is a built-in fear circuit which will activate and which will retract ourselves. We were exposed to such a danger, so okay. for, we don't have to be taught about it or we don't have to learn it. So we have. We, we certainly have uh, what you call as innate fear, uh, which, uh, which uh, helps us to, and it is, it is genetically imprinted. Uh, but as this far as the other part of your question is concerned, as to, uh, we, we know that those circuits are there, but, mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, I don't really know. Okay, okay. But what you said is, I mean, can I continue, Vinayak, one more question, please? Sure, go ahead, please, please go ahead, sir. So, uh, when you said reflex action like fear, I can understand that. But what I was referring to was something really constructive, creative, and uh, you know very intricate. For example, yes. knowing the nerve center or creating that hexagonal shapes in the beehive or uh -huh. creating these uh, anthill shapes, you know, the rooms. Yes. It's so yes. intricate and so de yes. so detailed. Yes. Does that kind of programming also exist in humans? Ah. Uh. Okay, 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 okay. I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know whether uh, I don't think so. It no, seems to me that if a human is left alone somewhere, yes. Yes. they won't be able to fend for themselves at all. I mean, a baby human. No, we we won't be able to. We it won't be able to. I think we depend on our culture and parental care yeah. to a great extent. I I don't think we will be able to do that. The, okay. the 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 only thing the only thing that a baby as soon as it is born has the innate knowledge to cling to the breast of the mother and start drinking milk. Yes, yes. That, I think beyond that, I think uh, the baby depends on the mother for everything else. Right, right. right. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for your questions. Thanks again. Sir, that's uh, Dr. Nath. Yes, please. Does toxoplasm causes any diseases like plasmodium? Okay. Oh, yeah, it does. It does. Uh, but it is particularly known that it can infect humans, and it is particularly it's very good. You ask the question, particularly if in, uh, for the for the human females, it yeah, it can give rise to sterility. So it's 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 very necessary, very necessary, particularly uh, when female scientists are there. They are generally advised not to work on toxoplasm. Okay, for the for the reason that uh, that that it has certain it is known and it is reported in literature that they have negative effects. Uh, with reference to the 
the reproductive system, particularly in the females. So it so it so it has it has a negative effect, and you have to be very very careful. Go ahead, please. So, uh, venom is something which is poisonous. That is, when it is injected, mm. the living organism may die. But yes. in the case of female wasp or the cockroach, sto cockroach story, as you said, yes. it does not die. But yes. instead, it is uh, yes. giving reprodu reproducing into a new generation of female wasp. Yes, yes. Said, the answer to that question is, everything is a dose. Dose. You see, the dentist gives you dentist gives you a tiny tiny injection in your gum and that reduces your pain okay but if i give you the same thing 10 times more directly into your brain you will die okay so so everything depends on uh, on how much quantity and injected where two things injected where and in how much quantity in this particular case if the vast were to inject a little more and somewhere else the cockroach would die and then it is useless for the purpose of reproduction so here is the skill of the vast in giving a very tiny dose, a measured amount of dose at a strategic site in the brain of the cockroach so, so that the cockroach doesn't die. Don't kill it, but take away its willpower so that you can manipulate the animal. So it's your question of how much and where. Thank you, sir. Right. Next question. Yes, sir. You want to ask them? We have time. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you, oh, yeah, go ahead, please. I have, I have a question about taxoplasma. Is it important to happen the process of taxoplasma between cat and mice? Please. Is it important to happen the process of taxoplasma between cat and mice? And why? Happen the process. Uh, is it important? Is it important to happen the process of taxoplasma between cat and mice? Is it important to have? It is, it is very important from the point of view of toxoplasma. <laughs> yeah, it is not important. It is, it is very dangerous from the point of view of rat because the rat loses its personality and becomes a victim. It is very dangerous for the cat because you don't want a parasite to live in your gut. Okay, so it is very bad for both of the animals. But here is an example where a parasite which is so tiny and so small is, is, uh, is manipulating both the animals to its own advantage. That is the advantage of toxoplasma. So does the mouse want it? No. Cat wants it? No. Who wants it? Toxoplasma. Does it answer your question? Thank you. Thank you. Sir, will the toxoplasma not manipulate cat when it can manipulate rat? It, uh, the answer is a very nice question. Will the toxoplasma manipulate the cat? The answer to that question the answer to that question, if it wanted to, it would. But why would it want? Why would the toxoplasma want to manipulate the cat? It has achieved its aim. What was the aim? The aim was to find itself located and lodged into the elementary canal of the cat. It got what it wanted. Then why should it go into the entire and then do what? It has no aim. Its aim is achieved. Would you uh, would you work for an uh, would you work for a certain examination after the examination is done? Got the you got the point? Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Uh, you want hello? You did did you have a question or you wanted to make a comment? Yes, yes. I just want to thank the speaker. It's one of the finest lectures I have attended. Oh, thank it's you. one of the finest lectures I have attended. As many of the students have said, I'm glad I'm neither a cat. Not a cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope there won't be anybody who will attack my tiny little brain. <laughs> <laughs> and a fantastic lecture. I think every time you come to JNC, you must make it a point to meet our young yeah, people. Yeah, sure, I'd love to. Thank you so much. You are so kind. Thank Madam, you so much. Uh, can you remove mask? Mask. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank yes. you. Students yes. can see you there. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Then one more thing is, we, women power. So yes. many young girls are asking such intelligent questions. Very, yeah, I don't great. know why the boys are so quiet. That's another comment. But. Shiva, um, thank you so much. Yeah, madam, there is a lot of queue of, you know, boys are waiting, you know. Uh, uh, boys will wait until you go outside and they'll privately ask. 
<laughs> okay. Thank you very much. So very much. It's a on pleasure. This, on Me this on this issue, my why my point of view is very clear. My daughters are better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dog girls are fearless. They yeah, don't mind. Absolutely. They don't mind admitting I don't know. <laughs> you must first admit I don't know. and i'm going to ask a question which many others are going to have but are too shy to ask yes 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 <laughs> absolutely 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 thank you quality. so much yeah yeah thank you so very much <laughs> thank you so thank you ma'am thank you thank you ho guna next question please sir yeah please go ahead sir i had a doubt that you told the zombie cockroach In yes. the same way, can a human brain be manipulated to be a zombie? The answer to that question is very difficult, but I'll try to answer it. It can be. It can be. See, have you? Uh, uh, I won't talk much about it, but I would request you to read more about the process of what you call as brain washing. <laughs> yes, I'm sure you have heard of this word, haven't you? okay so brain washing can result in making you think what i want you to think okay and not allowing you to have your will your way okay so that's possible okay but you can read this plenty of literature you can read about thank you sir so you said jewel was take the cockroach into burrow mm. and cover it mm. it the cockroach will come back or whether it's live there how can it survive there Uh, the cockroach is in the burrow. Huh. Okay, there's plenty of oxygen. Yeah. Okay, the oxygen is there, and uh, it and it is uh, it it doesn't need to feed. Okay, you see, it is on its way to die. Please remember that cockroach is on its way to die. It's going to die, <clears throat> but it's it's going to take. It's not going to die immediate. It's going to take. Uh, it's going to take three weeks, four weeks, and that time is enough for the larva to feed on the blood. and on the uh, other contents in the body of the cockroach so so what does okay so what does cockroach need to live the answer to that question is waiting for its death all its till that time all its needs is number 1 oxygen or air which is coming through air and number 2 it needs its vital organs like the malpighian tubules if malpighian malpighian tubules okay good you asked malpighian tubules are the excretory organs of the animal if those organs were uh, if the malpighian tubules were also consumed by the wasp uh, by by the growing larva of the wasp the cockroach would die so the larva is so smart that it will take whatever 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 is necessary for the cockroach to live it will not touch but what all the other organs it will keep on consuming the cockroach will keep on dying very slowly but the process it will take about almost one month to complete the process or to die and by then the purpose of the wasp is done it has it has the larva is finished pupa is coming its pupation is done and the adult is coming out emerging out of the of the body of the cockroach so and when the jewel wasp enters the cockroach body it continues to take control of its brain no why need not need It's not by then no 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 the larva the larva which is growing on the body of the cockroach need not does not take control of the brain of the cockroach that function is done by the mother okay the so the mother has the mother has uh, has taken away the motivation so the animal just lies there if it can get away with that get up from that it can run but it can't because those six cells are are now silent so it has lost so it just remains there thank you sir okay well last question Hello, sir. Yeah. My name is Kushi. Yes. I just wanted to ask a doubt whether the wasp has such a well-developed brain where it can know which organ to bite, uh, whether the cockroach may die when it when it, it, you told that wasp will take the organs. Yes. Uh, how does it know which organ to take? Yes. Yes. You see, these are the things which are not a matter of intelligence. these are the matters of built in circuits which are built in in the animal you the animal doesn't have to be taught you know the animal doesn't it is it is it is it is the it, it starts with genes it gives rise to circuits and those circuits automatically come up with that behavior 
So the so the so the animal has to no no this is a cockroach is it a cockroach oh it's a cockroach I'll do it no it is nothing like that the animal will I know automatically come with that 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 so it doesn't need a big brain no whatever the tiny brain is enough whatever is the tiny brain it has few neurons those circuits are there actually it's not a very small brain I mean there are, yeah you can you know you know you know how big the mushroom bodies are so 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 but it has good enough built-in circuits which circuits are programmed to do that particular function. To, to us, we, we feel that oh, it's very, there's no intelligence there. Okay, it's, it has evolved in that way and those circuits will undertake that function. It's not a question, I mean, it, it is not a question that, that it, has to, it has to learn the process and elaborate on it and then execute or nothing like that. It is, it is an imprint, it's a printed circuit in the brain of that animal and it will behave in that particular fashion. Right. Thank you, sir. Right, thank you, thank you so much. Sure, sure. You have a mic? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So I wanted to ask that uh, wasp larvae feeds on the cockroach. Yes. Like when it goes into that, how does it uh, like How does it feed? No, breathe, breathe, respire. Breathe. Ah, that's a very interesting question. A very interesting question. A very interesting question. How does the how does the animal breathe? The answer to that question is it has already drilled a hole. See the you see this is the body of the cockroach. On the body of the cockroach, that tiny egg is there. It's outside. Now, uh, within, within, by the time the, the egg hatches and the larva comes out, the larva has the mouth parts. With the mouth parts, it will drill a hole, dig a hole into the body of the cockroach, it will enter. Okay, so that, that hole is big enough for the air to enter. Okay, and then the, and the, and the, lar and the larva will have its own, uh, its own sparacles. Its own, its own respiratory system in the form of trachea. So there is, there is enough uh, air uh, to enter into the body of the cockroach and then into the body of the larva, uh, so which is good enough for the larva to so, respire on. So it's like uh, opening a window for the Opening brain. a perfect word. Perfect word. Better than I can do. Window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Thank you. It, it, right, 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 right. Okay, I didn't know that. I mean, the larva will have? Okay, okay. This is a fly larva. Okay, okay. Okay. Hello. Sir, last question. Sir. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sir, is cockroach mother or father, sir, here? It's, is it mother or father, sir? Very good question. Good question. It is, it is. It is not it, mother or father, it is lover. <laughs> it is the, it is the egg is being laid. The egg is being laid. Now question back to you, father or mother? It's mother. It's mother. Mother. She. What the answer? Cockroach male or female? No. One. Yeah. Yeah. Cockroach can be anything. Uh, uh, okay. Sir, uh, in the case of crocodiles, uh, uh, in the in the week or two weeks once, the crocodiles will come out of the come on the uh, uh, land and they'll open their mouth and sit. Uh, a small bird comes and cleans it, uh, eat, feed upon its teeth where the food particles will be stored on its teeth. It, it will not harm for that bird anything, and the bird goes away. But if uh, in uh, that uh, times, uh, the if other birds like crane or ducks come and sits on it, it would be feed on it. Cric yes. Would eat. Yes. Yes. But yes. It doesn't harm for that yes. small bird bites. Yes. So that. Oh, this is this this uh, this is again the relationship between different animals which have evolved over millions of years. Just as the relationship has evolved between the toxoplasma and the mouse and the cat. Or the relationship evolved over thousands of years between the emerald jewel wasp and the cockroach. Similarly, the relationship has evolved between the crocodile and a particular type of bird. Okay, and innately, innately genetically imprinted in the brain of the crocodile is that no, this is the bird is good for me. It is good for me. I'll let it pick my teeth. Okay. Okay, and, and and so it is. It's a genetic program. Is the crocodile thinking? No, no. Whether this good is this bird is good? No, there's nothing like that. It is. It is the genetic program. 
okay and that drives the behavior and that is how the that is how the behavior of the most of the animals is driven you see the the mosquito will come and bite you now did somebody teach the mosquito that oh there is a victim go the blood is very sweet you like it does it happen no no the moment you enter into the room okay the heat that is being generated from your body is sensed by the animal they have thermoreceptors they know that there is my victim is coming okay and, and there's a different thing these are the words which we these are the words we as humans use to communicate with one another but the, it doesn't even think the moment it knows okay the the program in its brain like a computer is triggered it will start flying it will come find your skin and start sucking the blood okay so these are all these are all genetically imprinted programs which drive the behavior of all animals they have I answered your question yes sir. oh great thank, thank you. you thank you okay thank you everyone uh, thank you everyone <laughs> thank you once again okay <laughs> please ask last question okay sir as you said taxoplasma lives in the gut of the cat mm. doesn't it affect the internal organs of the cat like oh that's a very good question very good is the uh, the does the cat have any you see if i have a malarial parasite i suffer from malaria so her question on similar lines is the uh, does the cat suffer as uh, as far as we know no cat has ever complained that oh i have stomach upset yes sir. So as I'm, I'm joking, uh, we still, do, uh, as far as uh, our, uh, the veterinary doctors tell us that uh, there is no discomfort experienced by the, by the cat, by, by the, by the cat. But, but if there are any fine uh, negative effects on the cat, we don't know about it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay, last question. Doubt upon okay. like upon the research. Okay. Sir said that you were doing some research before coming to here. Yes, like, yes. What research were you doing, sir? Like, oh, very, very doing? interesting. Oh, very interesting. It's like asking, sir, why did you marry madam? <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> That's exactly it. One more talk. <laughs> It's one more talk, and particularly for this question, uh, uh, sir, you have to call me once again. <laughs> Thank you. you know, you see what happens. You see, it is uh, as a student. You know, even even as a student, now that you are a student, you can ask a question. Well, I'm interested in the behavior of something can interest you. So, so when you you know what happens when you interest, you are interested. You read about it. You read about it. You like more. When you like more, you read. So it is a positive feedback back and forth, and then slowly uh, you become. Uh, uh, you do start working in it, start reading papers, start reading books, start discussing, okay? And then you come up with, then you ask yourself question, if this will do, that will do. And then you do plan experiment and then slowly you become a researcher and specialize in a particular area. So that's how uh, I do what I do. Like particularly, what are you searching right now? Right now. Okay. I want to show them, very good. I want to show them a video. Could you ask? Yes, sir. It gives me an opportunity to blab blab about myself. Sir, just see. Huh? I have time, I have time. I'll, I'll, yeah, no, no problem. I just, can you, no, wait, wait. I want to pause it. Okay. We are interested in studying the reward pathways in the brain, which means, which means, if you like a particular type of gulab jamun, what is it that drives you to the sweet market, buy that particular type of gulab jamun, and eat first gulab jamun, second gulab jamun, and then your stomach says that, no, no, you should not eat the third one, but no, no, I like it, therefore I am going to have the third gulab or fourth gulab jamun or fifth also. So what are the centers in your brain, just as they drive you to fear when you see a snake, Similarly, what are, the, what, are the, what are the areas in your brain which drive you to eat the food that you like is the type of area in which I work, in which our laboratory works. So what we do is we have implanted certain fine wires, which we call as electrodes, into those areas in the brain of the, of the rat. And then we have connected those electrodes via an electrical circuit, which is outside the box. And in the box, we provide a liver, a tiny liver. And we teach the rat, we teach the rat to press the liver. Every time the rat presses the liver, the current goes and the current goes right into the area of the brain and that area of the brain which makes the animal feel happy. 
that is excited and the animal feel likes it and because the animal likes it the animal again goes and presses the lever and it feels happy again it goes and if that particular moment if you give a tiny piece of food which the animal likes the animal will not take the food but it will keep on pressing the lever so what i am going to show you is another video of about 40 seconds in which you will find that on the skull of the rat a tiny electrode has been implanted and that animal uh, is, is in that chamber which we call as operant box and there is a liver and you will find that the animal has fallen in love of the liver because every time it presses the liver it gets a shot directly in the brain in that very area which was excited when you had that gulab jamun okay now with that background with that background i want you to please take a look at this rat on his skull you will find the electrode implanted and you will find the liver that liver is there at the other end just see it's a piece of metal why should the animal be interested in a piece of metal because every time it presses Okay, it was it was great talking to you. I'm 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 I'm, I'm very much indebted and uh, hope to see you sometime again. Thank you so much. Please give us a minute. Okay, sit. Uh, thank you very much, sir. It was a brainstorming uh, lecture, you know. Really? Okay. Then uh, I request uh, Professor Shiba Vasu to give a small present to. Sir, thank you, uh, Madam. On behalf of CNRO Hall of Science and uh, ETU, uh, this is a small presentation. Thank you. Can you? Okay. Good afternoon. Came to the moon. Afternoon. Yeah. And it's time for a vote of thanks. Uh, on behalf of CNRO Hall of Science and Education Technology Unit, we express our uh, sincere thanks to Professor uh, Nishkan Subeda for giving a such interesting lecture. And I thank Professor Shiba Vasu for convening the program. We thank Bharat Ratna Professor CNR Rao and uh, Dr. In Mrs. Indumati Rao for their vision, continued guidance, and commitment to popularizing science in nationwide. We thank the president of JNCSR, Professor G. U. Kulkarni, for extending his support and facilities for this program. We thank Mr. Dwarkanath and his team for coordinating the, with the schools and colleges to participate in today's event. We appreciate the participation of the students and teachers from various colleges in today's event, both online and offline. We thank the supporting staff and administration for the JNCSR for providing the infrastructure, facilities, and administration support for this program. Finally, I thank Mr. Munegowda, Sukanya, and Dilip, Praveen, especially Praveen, for their technical assistance, you know, uh, making this event success and technically. And thank you very much. And thank you, one and all. Thank you once again, sir. It was a really nice talk actually. I we liked it very much. Students also enjoyed. And thank you.